Hillary Clinton has just weighed in on how Congress should respond to the Mueller report and whether House Democrats should move quickly to impeachment proceedings. Her comments relate to new reporting about the president today and the question it raises, something that no one has ever had to ask before because up until now it's simply been unthinkable. Would the president of the United States leave this country vulnerable to attack by a foreign adversary to protect his own ego? Would he push the country into a constitutional crisis over the investigation of those attacks just to bolster his self-esteem? Now, I know it sounds absurd or at the very least outlandish that a person so powerful might be doing that. But there's new CNN reporting tonight on how President Trump's insecurity over his election victory has made any cabinet level discussion or Oval Office discussion of ongoing Russian interference difficult, if not impossible. A government official telling the leads, Jake Tapper, that it is, quote, like pulling teeth to get the White House to focus, unquote, on the ongoing threat of Russian election interference. Not what happened in 2016, which the president still has not convincingly accepted, but what could happen in 2020 in terms of foreign interference in the next election. The same official saying to Jake Tapper, and again, I'm quoting, in general, senior White House staff felt it wasn't a good idea to bring up issues related to Russia in front of the president. Now, what makes this so startling is that top officials in this administration are well aware of the threat. The warning signs are there. The system is blinking. And it is why I believe we are at a critical point. It was in the months prior to September 2001 when, according to then CIA Director George Tenet, the system was blinking red. And here we are two decades, nearly two decades later, and I'm here to say the warning lights are blink, blinking red again. Today, the digital infrastructure that serves this country is literally under attack. So that was the Director of National Intelligence, Dan Coats, whose department handles threat assessment. The Department of Homeland Security, meantime, has the responsibility of civilian cyber defense. And this government official who spoke to Jake Tapper says that the DHS tried repeatedly over the last year or so to set up more cabinet level meetings on the subject of preventing interference again, but quote, kept getting the Heisman meaning the stiff arm from National Security Advisor John Bolton and others in the White House. Now, separately, the New York Times is reporting that acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney told the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen not to bring up the subject in front of President Trump. And I'm quoting now from the Times' account of a meeting. Mulvaney, quote, made it clear that Mr. Trump still equated any public discussion of malign Russian election activity with questions about the legitimacy of his victory. Now, Mr. Mulvaney, through a spokesman, disputes that, telling the Times, quote, I don't recall anything along those lines happening in any meeting, which is not quite the same as saying it didn't happen. It's just saying, I don't recall. In any event, the Mueller report also speaks to that same notion. I'm quoting now from volume two, page 23. Several advisors recalled that the president-elect viewed stories about his Russian connections, the Russian investigations, and the intelligence community's assessment of Russian interference as a threat to the legitimacy of his electoral victory not a threat to the United States. Hicks, for example, that's Hope Hicks, said that the president-elect viewed the intelligence community's assessment as his, quote, Achilles heel, unquote, because even if Russia had no impact on the election, people would think Russia helped him win, taking away from what he had accomplished. That was when he was president-elect. And according to this new reporting, it still seems to be his Achilles heel. It's as if embarrassment over the attack on Pearl Harbor made it impossible for President Roosevelt to fight the Second World War or talk about it realistically or even hear about it from others. That's where we are tonight. In fact, it's probably where we've been since before the election. I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. She's saying Russia, 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 but I don't, maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? You don't know who broke in to DNC. So that was in September of 2016. We now know one month before that, he was reportedly briefed by members of the intelligence community that, yes, it was the Russians. And here he is, nearly two years and several more briefings later from his own intelligence officials saying this in front of Vladimir Putin. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be, but I really do want to see the server. I think it's a disgrace that 
we can't get Hillary Clinton's 33,000 emails. So I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. He later claimed he had missed up, messed up a word and didn't really mean that he didn't know why it would be Russia. He said that in front of Vladimir Putin right there, as you saw, after meeting privately with him, and we should point out we still have no idea what he discussed privately. It's not even clear many of his top officials knows for sure either. The president referred there to DNI Dan Coats, who just issued the warning that we played at the top less than a week before that the system was blinking, blinking red. The president said what you just heard in response. Yet even that couldn't stop him from casting doubt on something that every top intelligence official in his own administration considered beyond any doubt. Yet, according to all we know from the Mueller report, from the Times, from our own reporting tonight, they simply could not even mention the subject to him, even though they knew the country was still under attack. Again, just let that sink in. The commander in chief couldn't be told the country was either under or at least susceptible to further attack because not hearing apparently helps the president sleep better at night, feels better about himself. As for the country, perhaps not so much.